Hey guys, what is up? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and we are back with another explanation. Taking an in-depth look at the company, which has been a pivotal driving force of the alien universe. Wayland yutani The Wayland yutani Corporation, often shortened to Wayland yutani and commonly referred to as the company, is a large British-Japanese multinational conglomerate. It was founded in 2099 by the merger of Wayland Corp and the Utani Corporation. The company is primarily a technology supplier, manufacturing synthetics, spaceships, and computers for a wide range of industrial and commercial clients, making them a household name. Wayland Utani also has numerous non-manufacturing interests. The company has extensive assets in interplanetary shipping and transport, and is one of the corporations that operates human colonies outside the solar system through the Extrasolar Colonization Administration, which it controls. The company also has a seat in the Interstellar Commerce Commission's Company Review Board and runs the United States Colonial Marines. They hold their main offices in Tokyo, London, San Francisco, the Sea of Tranquility on Luna, and on Thetis. Wayland yutani is consistently portrayed as exhibiting the worst aspects of corporate profiteering, willing to sacrifice decency and life in the endless pursuit of profits. As such, it is a modern example of the long-standing trope of the evil megacorporation in science fiction. In various portrayals within the alien universe, the corporation has its hands in all aspects of space colonization and research. It has consistently driven its employees and agents to obtain a living sample of the species they designate, Xenomorph XX121, often without regard for the lives of anyone involved in said attempts, so that the creature may be exploited as biological weapons or otherwise for financial gain. According to Wayland yutani employee, Carl Bishop Wayland, one of the corporation's primary goals behind capturing the xenomorphs and creating weapons out of their biology is to ensure that humanity remains the elite species in the universe, and not just because of monetary profits. Following the 2099 merger, Wayland yutani opened with the largest share value ever recorded on the system's exchange. The company would go on to buy out numerous other businesses, investing in almost every sector, and had a controlling stake in a vast number of diverse corporations. According to some, Wayland yutani owned pretty much everything by the 2150s. From the beginning, even the lowliest of Wayland yutanis employees were aware of the corrupt nature of the conglomerate. It was common knowledge amongst the company commercial haulage fleet that senior management routinely bribed and paid off inspectors rather than submit to thorough safety inspections and reviews of their vessels. Sometime prior to 2122, the Wayland yutani Corporation detected the signal being broadcast from the derelict on Asheron LV-426. While the language was unknown, the company succeeded in deciphering enough of the message to learn it was a warning regarding the deadly species, Xenomorph XX-121. They subsequently dispatched an Nostromo to investigate, without the crew's knowledge, leading to initial human contact with the Xenomorph, and the death of all but one of the ship's crew. While the incident and the existence of the Xenomorph was apparently covered up by those involved, the company later established the Hadley's Hope terraforming colony on LV-426 under the direction of Carter Burke. By 2179, Wayland yutani was heavily involved in the colonization of extrasolar planets, including the terraforming of suitable bodies with inhospitable atmospheres through the construction of atmosphere processing plants. Over its history, the corporation constructed and administrated numerous colonies across the galaxy, including Hadley's Hope and LV-426, and Freya's Prospect on BG-386. Wayland yutani was also involved in non-civilian colonies, notably overseeing the Class C Work Correctional Unit and the associated industrial penal lead foundry on Fiorina Fury 161. The company also operated numerous research and development facilities throughout the galaxy, often pursuing top-secret research into illegal or dangerous fields. Much of the company's laboratories included installations on LV-1201, BG-386 and the Origin facility on LV-426. These labs often operated under amoral conditions, especially where xenomorph research was concerned. Humans were frequently used as unwilling hosts for the creatures while some teams were even known to deliberately sacrifice low-level Wayland yutani employees as live prey in xenomorph tests. On BG-386, inhabitants from the planet's civilian colony were apparently abducted for use in research, often under the pretense of being promoted to a new position elsewhere on the planet. 
despite tight security, typically enforced by Weyland Yutani manufactured combat androids. These research facilities were notorious for their containment failures and outbreaks. Events that usually led to a huge loss of life among staff and civilians. Weyland Yutani's Bioweapons Division was a special department that dealt with the research and development of biological and viral weapons. One of their primary goals was to obtain a viable specimen of the species they designated Xenomorph XX121, whether it be in the form of a facehugger, chestburster, or a mature adult. In some cases, an immature chestburster sample was considered preferable due to the ease with which one could be passed through quarantine undetected within their host. Weyland Yutani believed that biological self replicating weapons such as the Xenomorph could form a ubiquitous component of distant force projection operations, which were otherwise vulnerable to unforeseen threats capable of exhausting traditional security personnel and ammunition stores that may not be easily replenished across the vast distances of space. Ellen Ripley inevitably became a major enemy of Weyland Yutani's bioweapons division after surviving the company's first attempt to capture a live xenomorph aboard the Nostromo. Ripley would subsequently uncover and defeat numerous other attempts made by the company in this regard. Following Weyland Yutani's collapse, much of the bioweapons division's work was appropriated and continued by the United Systems military. The USM's own research was also foiled by Ripley 8, a clone of the original Ellen Ripley. Apart from the company's bioweapons projects, Weyland Yutani was also heavily involved in the manufacture of conventional weaponry and was a major supplier for the United States Colonial Marines. Weyland Yutani's products include the VP 78 pistol and the NSG 23 assault rifle. Weyland Yutani held numerous other divisions of interest, most notably a large stake in interplanetary cargo transport. The company's terraforming efforts were frequently portrayed as being benevolent in nature, but almost always carried a hidden agenda, or at least a substantial profit margin for the company. By the 2290s, Weyland Yutani began experiencing serious financial and political pressures. Its colony at New Indy successfully sued for independence. Two years after that, Weyland Yutani lost out to rival conglomerate Ridton on a contract to supply the United Systems military with FTL drives, severely affecting the company's financial performance. Finally, in 2349, mega corporations such as Weyland Yutani were outlawed altogether. The company appealed, but after three years of costly litigation, the ban was upheld and Weyland Yutani formally folded. As noted earlier, Many of the company's weapons and research and development interests were taken over by USM. However, even during this time, agents of Weyland Yutani continued to operate in secrecy. The company utilized contacts within the USM who passed them information about their various research projects. Following the crash of the USM Auriga on Earth, Weyland Yutani seized much of the information collected about the xenomorphs by the USM, incorporating it into Alien, the Weyland Yutani Report an extensive report on the xenomorph species and humanity's historical encounters with it. Following the fall of the USM, Weyland Yutani eventually re-emerged as a powerful multinational corporation, a resurgence partly fueled by the company's role in cleaning up the heavily polluted and damaged earth and the corresponding surge in public approval and support that went with it. Unfortunately, that's all that we have time for today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like and to subscribe to stay up to date on all my content. Also check out my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel, and please don't forget to subscribe to my Facebook to find out what content is coming out next and when. Alright guys, stay awesome. Niat here with Film Comics Explained, thanks for stopping by. For those of you who know me, you will be aware by now that my ambition is unlimited. You know that I will settle for nothing short of greatness, or I will die trying. For those of you who do not yet know me, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Peter Wayland, and if you'll indulge me, I'd like to change the world.